Okay, so let's just do a, a bit of, uh, of housekeeping and, and injuries and, and squad news. Any more development with um, uh, with players coming back? Or I guess the, the big one is, is Zach Viner and, and how long he's likely to be out for? Yeah, um, coming back, Tommy's been in training with us. Tommy Conway has been back training with us, which, is, which has been brilliant. Uh, chomping at the bit as he always is. Uh, he's looking fit and looking strong. Um, he's not too far away. We're still assessing him and make sure before he gets involved but it'll be, it'll be a lot sooner than later I think he's he's uh, he's itching to get back in maybe not to play 90 minutes but you know to for, to get a position on the bench or something like that he's not too far away the lad so it's great for him but again we don't want any little hiccups or any little things that push him back an extra week or anything he's it's hard to keep him under control <laughs> most of the time so I think we can't afford that so we'll just make sure he's right but he's, he's, he's just there uh, Zach Viner's got a ligament injury and you know surgery required um, after seeing a specialist so that's ongoing treatment at the moment it will be a few weeks as we know that will be but that's great news for him and great news for us great news for the fans it'll be great to get him back and uh, again you know we've got to be careful with him but um, that, I thought that was a real good you know boost for everybody because it's one of those, you know, it, if it was as bad as it might have been, then you're looking at the rest of the season then, aren't you? Yeah, certainly, you know, he's, he's just signed his new contract, you know, played a year last season, he's had a great start to the season. And, and not for him, you know, Rob has come in, Rob Dickey came in on Saturday, I thought it was, it was fantastic. Um, but it just, it, it keeps the competition for places. But for Zach, he's, he's had such a turnaround in my time, in my short time here. He's just seen a lot more of it in my short time here. The turnaround has been... You know, unbelievable. Well, maybe not unbelievable. We knew everything was there, but he's, he's he's really stepped up to the plate, and that's down to him and his character, and he's got the ability. We all knew that. So, um, so it's great. That it's not going to be long term, and he, he'll be back in uh, with us as soon as we can get him out there. And with that turnaround, realistically, every player in your club, in your senior club, is a good player because they don't get here without doing that. But that mental side of it, that belief, whatever you want to call it, is such a big part of it. Is having somebody who's so evidently shown that you can come back from a, a difficult situation or when you're not quite as good as you could be, is that a really good, not a learning tool, but an example for, for anybody else who thinks, you know what, I'm good enough, but I'm just not, I'm not quite there at the moment? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's a huge thing for him. And it's something that we said to him, but sometimes it's about him believing and it's about what are people believing. Um, there's no doubt where you've seen him. He's an unbelievable athlete. He's an unbelievable athlete. He's he's a very very good technical centre back. You know he's quick. So you got all the attributes there. It's just sometimes just believing and getting to know your game and having that full full kind of confidence in yourself. And it's a difficult thing to do. People can't give you that. We all know that as as human beings. It's you know you can look eight foot two and you can look ripped and that. But in your mind you think you're two foot two and you're not ripped, then you've got a problem. So I think he's at the showing a real, a real character to come back. And I think if anybody, you know, when I, I, I'm contradicting myself a little bit, I'm saying he came coming back. He wasn't a he wasn't a starter in the team a couple of times. He'd been left out of the squad a couple of seasons ago. You know because of the way we wanted to go, there was nothing personal in it. But he's at the coming back and he's at the smashing the door down, isn't he? And he's saying my huge part of this, and he's captain. <laughs> you know, on occasions he's at the getting himself a three-year contract, and that's a brilliant statement to him. But it's a statement for the club as well that we've nurtured that the club have nurtured that from since he was a kid. We've given the opportunity; he wasn't just thrown out. We've given the opportunity to come back, and he's he's grabbed it with both hands. So for us, I think that's that's wonderful. And and that sort of individual belief is. Was there an element of the performance up at, at Leicester at the weekend as more of a, a collective thing? That I'm thinking there's, there's quite a few times in recent years you've gone away to a, a very good side, one of the favourites, and if not got absolutely thumped, you, you never looked like you were going to get anything out of the game, even if it was a relatively close scoreline. Do you sense that that belief is, is growing that actually, you know what, yes, maybe they have got a few bigger players and all the rest of it, but, but we can go out and give anybody a game and, and not just say it, actually really mean it? Yeah, and I think you've probably seen that, haven't you? You've seen that, but it's something that we've probably told you over the last two years that we're trying to get to that situation where we're, we're consistent, we're evolving all the time. We were a transitional team, weren't we? Everyone was saying we're a transitional team last season. Now teams are giving us a bit more respect and we have to keep handle the ball. We've got to handle the ball better and we've got to uh, 
trying, uh, try and um, solve the conundrums that other teams are putting up now instead of us just sitting back and waiting and going. So I think going away, you know, 94 minutes against Leicester, a really good team, there's no doubt about it. Um, and still thinking, yeah, we can we can get something here. You know, the possession stats, it, it doesn't matter, it's about the results. So we, we get a goal, we've got a couple of chances. In the end, that we were probably disappointed that we didn't hit the target or we didn't work the keeper enough at times. But every game now, we really believe that we can match anybody in the league. And, and why not? You know, it's something that we've tried to, to, to nurture here. And I think you can see it kind of growing. And we are, we're not there yet. I still don't believe, I still think there's growth in us and I still think there's that belief to, 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 that we can grow up a little bit more in ourselves. But I think you can see the progress that we've made. Um, but as I said, it's not its not the finished article. We've got to keep, you know, we've got to keep working and no better league in, in the world probably than the championship because if you're not at it every week, whoever you play against, um, you won't get a result. One of the things that stood out to me was actually Rob Dickey chatting after the match by the end of the interview, he was frustrated that you didn't try and land a few more blows on Leicester. This time last year or the year before, I think the general sentiment would have been, we're quite happy to have kept it close. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think that again is a, is a, is a, is a shift in mentality and, and expectation. And the expectation isn't just from us as coaches, it's from the players themselves. When they go out onto the pitch, we can only at times organise a team and have a game plan and we know what we're going to do. But when you walk out in front of 32 or 34,000 people, sometimes it's a little bit different. And, uh, you know, different things happen in games. And I think that we were frustrated in the dressing room later after the game because a couple of opportunities where we just didn't find that pass. We didn't just hit that target, you know, where, you know, in the previous games we had made that pass and which gives us an opportunity to score. And I think that was a frustration. A couple of guys saying, I should have done this and I should have done that. But what we loved was the belief that they can do it and they wanted to do it and they had the right idea to try and do it. It wasn't just get it and kick it away. It was like, this is what we have to do. This is where we think we can hurt them and that's what we tried to do. And and it was, I was really, I was happy that Nigel said after the game in his post-match conference that he said that it, you know, he was very proud of the lads because we were very proud of them because they didn't give up. They keep going. And as I say to you, every time I do the press with you, I just love the work rate that they put in and you'll never question any of them for effort. So Stoke at home this weekend, um, safe to say that they've had a difficult time the last few weeks? They've had a difficult time, but um, again, this championship, uh, I, I, I love the championship because we had, a, we had a great result against Plymouth and we played so well in that game and it's something then we have to replicate. We have to go again. But then Plymouth go and beat Norwich 6-2 or 5-2 on, on the Saturday and that's the championship. And that's what I'm saying to you, if you don't turn up. So they've brought in 17 players, Stoke. They've brought in some really good players. They've got a lot of proven championship players in that squad. And they're a decent team. You know, sometimes you just need that little bit of luck to get on a run. You need to just believe in the consistency. Every game you play, you get better. They looked in a very, very good shape. Um, they changed the formation against Bournemouth. They looked very solid. So that's something, again, that we have to think about. But, um, you know, we, we can't. We've got to think about ourselves. We have to be every game. It doesn't matter who you play. It's Leicester, it's Stoke, it's Plymouth, it's Middlesbrough. It doesn't matter. We have to be thinking about what we are and how hard we have to work and what we have to do and about our shape. And when we go into those games like that, I think that we're a match for most teams in the league. With Tommy, then, it's fair to say he's ahead of schedule based on what, when he's staying mm. at the start of August, wasn't it? So, mm, yeah. yeah, is he ahead yeah. of schedule from base based on? And I appreciate you still being Yes, yeah, the yeah, 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 ahead of schedule. You know, I'm, when, when we talk about schedules, schedules are kind of put out there to be, you know, they can be stretched and they can be shortened. It's, yeah. it's just a general time frame yeah. that's put out there for everybody. Everybody hears differently, everyone trains differently. Uh, some guys you've got to calm down. You know, you've got to calm down. We've had Rob Atkinson out, you know, in the warm-ups with us and some of the passing with us and stuff, which is wonderful. Again, is he ahead of schedule? We we don't know, but we're just integrating him in. But Tommy's looking sharp, but you don't get the much, much sharpness in training. You know, you can run him all you want, but now it's getting the games, minutes into him and integrating him back in. Um, when we think it's right, not when he thinks it's right. 
that we've got such a good medical team here and sports science team and then he's got to get into a good team as well <laughs> so it's uh, so that will all but for him I think he's done brilliantly to get to this stage and he's he's really knocking at the door and for him I think to I think he was probably looking after the the international break if I would say so you could say he's, he's maybe a little bit ahead of time but we, we'll see we, we'll tell him so if he had his way he'd be starting on Saturday Oh yeah, well he would have said that three weeks ago. You know what I mean? He would have, and he'd say every time you see him, he says, "I'm great. You know, I'm I'm great. I'm great. I'm doing this. I'm doing that." And um, and again, that's what I say to you. That's why I get excited because I love the lads. This is so buoyant and <laughs> like just desperate to play. There's no fear of three o'clock on a Saturday when any of these young lads. Um, and I think it's for him. Is yeah, he, he will be involved. He will be involved in the next few games. I, I can imagine, um, and we look forward to that. And, and just, just to, in terms of training, so that's full training, so he's striking, yes. striking the ball, playing in APA or whatever. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's getting kicked, so okay. he's um, he's in contact. I think it's the, the next stage, and it's the stage. The only stage now you can do is is, is playing against people that you don't know. <laughs> you know the yeah. un, the really uncontrolled environment, where you're playing against people that you you know you're playing for the points on the Saturday, but you can only get that with playing those games. So we we will work that into him as we go. But he's playing against some really good defenders here. He's getting kicked by really some some by some good defenders. He's getting contact, and uh, he's come through with no problem. So um, again, as I said to you, you know, I'm not be, we're not being over cautious or anything. We're just making sure that he's right because we don't want any repercussions of him just you know rushing it by two days and then missing two months. It's it's craziness, you know. We wanted to come back and really fit and and, and add it, you know. Um, was Andy okay after his sort of about half an hour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy was fine. Yeah. Andy was fine. And again, you know, he wants to play. Another one who's chomping at the bit, different age bracket. But um, but he's the one that's out shooting with the lads. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I know. He'll, he'll probably have a go at me about that. But that, but that's fine. But he's um, he's uh, he had no he had no problems. He's got orthotics in his boots now, and uh, he's getting still probably getting used to them. Um, but you can't see any of the limp or anything like that, and the, the pressure that was put on the sole of his feet when he fought when he was um, coming back the last time. So, you know, touch wood, no, no problem. He's had a good training session today, and uh, again, you know, came through it fine. Um, how's uh, Eamon doing? Was that the 21s on Monday? Maybe a chance. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, Eamon's had a couple of little bits, you know, just a little bit of tightness and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So we've been kind of pulling and pushing him forward, pulling him back, pushing him forward, pulling him back, just making sure again. He's a workhorse. Uh, yeah, you know how he plays, but he wants the ball all the time. He, he, he's a strong runner. He's So he's all everything he's doing in training is doing that, but we, sometimes we're just making sure he's okay. Um, he's tightened up a couple of times. And again, like we say, we don't want any, you know, reoccurrence of anything. So we've got. We're, so we're probably, if I would say anything, we are being cautious, and we're being protective of him to make sure he's been out a while now, and we've got to make sure that we ease him in and, and get him right. He's got a lot of. It's good for him, isn't he? He's a young lad, so he's got a lot of years left in his career. Um, so I'll just let's protect him now. Absolutely. As I was at the 21s, obviously, Anis was involved. Aiden was involved. Mm. Um, definitely played. Yes. And Taylor got yes. as well. Yes. There's been situations previously where players have said they wanted to play for the 21s. I just wonder with those guys if put an effort in that bracket as well. Mm. Yeah. No, no, he's but 12. He's 12 years he old. Is, you know, so enough. just, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, yeah. Right, first team player. Yes. No disrespect to the lads in the 21s. But yes. Did they choose to play in the 21s or was that a decision by you guys to get keep their minutes up? Yeah, it's a bit of both, really. Okay. Uh, I think they they want to play. They're not getting, you know, you know. Taylor hasn't had loads, has he? he hasn't had loads of game time when he was at West Brom. He's come to us and he hasn't had. He's had a couple of games, which is fine. But it just keeps the lads ticking over. And I think again, training's fantastic. But then you go into the uncontrolled environment. You know, a tough game against it was such an Ashton Gate. Great, great pitch, isn't it? You know, so it's, uh, if you don't want to play, that's why we get paid. You got to go and play. So for us, it was an opportunity to get some minutes into them, and they were happy to do that. Um, for us, you know, the young lads, you know, everyone's thinking of signings, but the the young guys, the 21 year old, you know, they're still learning the trade, so you still have to go. They're not 400 game veterans at you know 32 that you're thinking, okay, 
do you want to play? Do you need a game? Let's have a discussion about it. There's still young boys laying in the trade, so they all wanted to play and, and get out there. And, and there's nothing better as a footballer. You want to play matches. You want to play matches. Yes, you want to play. You know, some of these lads are probably playing a park with a mate if you give them an opportunity. So I think for them it was good to get the 60 minutes in, but we gave them 60 minutes so they would be involved in our training for the rest of the week in preparation for the Stoke game and for the um, for next week. So it, it was uh, it was it just shouldn't be anything that we should be surprised about. Yes, they wanted to play, and yes, we wanted them to play. Um, how, how have you kind of assessed Taylor in midfield? Because obviously he started at Swansea, mm. right back, um, and then since then he's been a midfielder. Um, yeah. How have you kind of assessed it? Yeah, I think so, and we can see it. And, and, and I don't think he's the finished article. Again, I think we've brought somebody in. He's a young player. He's still growing. Um, when he came in, and we, we spoke about it, you know, we can play a couple of positions, which is important to the way we work. You know, we haven't got a huge squad. We have players that can play in numerous positions, and are quite happy to do that, and quite comfortable to do that. Um, I think he's probably preferred position is midfield. Um, and I think you've seen that why. He can handle the ball very well. His passing range is very, very good. Um, and now we haven't seen him fit yet, really, have we? We haven't seen the guy who's played six, seven games, league games, who's had those, you know, the bangs and the Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, and that will come. And he just needs to get into a team that's performing well. But I think, like you, we're happy with what we see. But he shouldn't rest in his laurels, and we won't. He needs to be better, and he will get better. Um, and you know, we'll, let's see how he is in you know a year or two. But I think he's he's come in. He's great around the place again, which is something important to us. The character of people is very important when I just, when I just signing them. That's one probably one of the main questions. The ability is is fantastic, but you're gonna have that mentality to come in and want to work and uh, and come in and, and get along with the guys because we've got a real good dressing room and uh, Noyd is happy with that. He's took that took a while to get exactly where he wants to be. And we've got there, so really happy with him. Um, and then we'll just see how he progresses as we go. How do you assess the character? Because it's hard. Like, obviously, I'm, you, yeah. you get people's opinions and stuff like that. But it's, it's kind of a hard thing to quantify, them, right, isn't it? Cause it is, it is. What person is like. Yes, it is, but I think the game is very small. It's a very right. small game. I think that you can do invest because you know you talk about technique, you talk about fitness, you've got the data and that, but then you can find out about character in ways. Um, I'm not saying that we like hired a private investigator and we and we follow them around for two or three weeks, but we can get you know we can get a feel from from players that they've played with, coaches that they've worked with, um, and then you'll only really know when they come into the building. But uh, we were quite confident uh, knowing about you know knowing about him and hearing about him and the way he plays that he would fit in here, and it's great when he has. But again, you know he's still got a bit of growing to do as well in that, you know to be. He, when you come into a club as a young player, it's very hard to start taking over and, and being the main man in the dressing room. You start to grow into that and that strength and the respect comes from the lads and stuff. And he's doing that. But um, the one thing I would say, he's brilliant. Every day he comes in, he's happy to be here, and uh, and that's what we love. The twenty runs. There was a try list up front. Um, I appreciate it's not mm. maybe strictly your department. No. I just wonder if you could shed yeah. light on that situation. No, that was more you know tins. Tins had gone him in and seen him and, and, and uh, knew of him and just wanted to have a little look and um, probably pushed Andy forward he'd probably have a chat with, with, with Tins we knew he was coming we, you know we've looked at the clips and that but for us at the moment we were thinking about Stoke and, and then that's something that would probably come down later on if, if anything was going to happen when Tins, Tins would come and see us but I don't think it was like literally for the first team well, yeah, that was really my yes I don't think it was the first team yeah it was an under consideration that's someone that we can grow um, if needs be, but uh, for us now it wouldn't be an impact on us. It wouldn't be a signing for the first team. How how are you kind of feeling um, about the team defensively this season, mm. having sort of worked again, so I'm aligning you with your kind of former position. Yes, player, yes. It must be an area you're kind of taking. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, 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 I like it. The mechanics of it and how it fits the chemistry. Like, how, yes. how do you kind of feel the defence has progressed over the seasons you've been there? Well, I think I'll probably ask you. What do you think? You know, do you think it's improved? Yeah, do you certainly. think there's a lot? That's what I mean. So it's something again that we have to work on, that we've been working on. And again, wherever goal is conceded, we we still look at it. 
you know, we still look at it. But in, within that, we, you know, years ago, I remember being a defender and we did a defensive like meeting. It was just like every goal that gone in and got finger pointed at you, you know, like what were you doing there and what were you doing there? Where now we, we'll have a, a good discussion in units and we'll talk about little things that maybe we could have done better, but then we'll be showing the last ditch tackles. We'll be showing a couple of blocks against Leicester in the six yard box the other day where that's not coached. That's a willingness to do your job. Is that split second? That's not sorting your feet and I'll do this and I'll do that. That's like literally last ditch defending, which is which is quality. The lads laughed at it. I'm probably the only one that gets excited. I get get more excited, I think, sometimes with that block in the six yard box and someone bending in the top corner from twenty five yards because the both says is important in the game. It's very, very important about parts of it. So we shouldn't really dismiss you know, guys getting a block in and people go, oh, no, fair play to him. That was great, wasn't it? And then someone beats someone, bend it in, it's, whoa, wax a lyrical, and it's the best thing ever. So it's something. So it's something that we're working on, something, again, we think we can improve on. And and what I think what, what helps with that is competition because you have to play well to be in the team. And if you're doing your job very well, you'll stay in the team. If not, there's somebody ready to come in. So we've got that competition in so many places now. So that defensive, like, Blocks. I was going to write mm. this cover like Thomas Callas used to do it. Yes. Yes. Game. Yes. It was almost like, an, that's not to say the other players didn't do it, like Bates used to yes. do it. Yes. Like that, but it's like everyone's going to do it now. Yes. Yes. So is that something you've kind of consciously tried to do, or is it, is it you saying their mentality has shifted slightly so they're all kind of, the desire is. Yes, but. but it, yeah, well, I, I think you've always had the desire, but I think it's something that we have to talk about and we have to work on and, and why we're in the team. You know, sometimes you're in the team, you know, people are saying, if so, if the defender makes it a, a mistake, I think what you'll probably say, he's made a mistake, you won't talk about his pass completion. His pass completion might have been 95%, but that one time when he has to win the tackle and he doesn't win it, you're not going to write about his passing was great. <laughs> you're going to say he didn't do his job at that moment. So I just think that sometimes the defenders have to really believe that that's your number one and then we work from that instead of working it the other way, you know, and I think that's something that we've talked about as a group. And I think another thing about defensive is it's it's not an individual, It's individually it's great, but you're in a unit, yeah. you're in a team. So if the winger skips by me as a fullback, is my centre back going to be there to help me? Is he going to come sliding across and win that? If I fall over in the six yard box and the lad ends up getting a strike, is somebody willing to throw the body in? And I think you can see that, and that's a collective effort. That's a collective, but that's from everybody. We've got Jamo blocks, we've got Joe blocking, you know, we've got Soisy coming back in the six yard box, you've got Belly running everywhere to try and keep that ball out of the net. You know, Ephraim, you know, a couple of the goals, when he came on, you can see the goal and it ended up Belly and, and Ephraim are the two lads in the six yard box trying to keep the ball out of the net. So that's a, that's a, it's a real kind of togetherness and team ethic that we, we defend kind of as a, as a team and attack as a team, but I think that the defenders have to know the job is we'll talk about strikers if they don't. We won't talk about belly, we'll talk about belly if he misses a chance, but you probably won't talk about he's blocking the edge of the box. So then it just it starts to get a little bit more, you know, uh, position specific then. Just finally, um, you're kind of a bit more prominent in the technical area now, obviously, because of, because of Nigel. Yes, but yes. I just how you kind of find your voice, how you kind of find that. <laughs> well, you probably heard now. It was only a, it was only a quiet session today. I mean, I'm a bit hoarse, and um, I do like to shout and I do like to jump a little around a little bit. Probably a bit calmer off the pitch than I am in the technical area. But again, you just do what's needed at the time. And, and Noy just said, you know, Noy just wants to jump up every two minutes. And we're just saying, calm down. We can do that. We can get the messages on. But um, I enjoy it. I enjoy it because we're we're a team. You know, and we, we're always discussing things. You'll see us on the bench all the time. We're discussing every little aspect of everything that's going on. So who jumps up? It doesn't really matter. What's the message is going on? And Nige, you know, Nige is funny because he'll say, "I'm not going up." And then a minute later, he's on your shoulder. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And you're like, "Okay, I thought you weren't going to." Well, okay, no problem. You're the, you're the gaffer, and there uh, you jump to the back. But um, for us, it's about it's just showing the support for the lads, and it's just being there, and it's not for show. I mean, if we're going to go out into the technical area, it's to do something and it's to say something and to encourage 
or to to dictate what way we're going to go. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, it's about the, the lads on the pitch for me. It really is everything that they do, and they put their life and soul out there in front of everybody. So it's great sometimes to stand in that technical area and look at them and kind of go, wow, as Nigel said, be proud of them. And uh, I, I love it, to be fair.